Hello everyone, it's Trina here from there's a card for that.ca and today I'm going to be making this just because card using the Be Yourself stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. This was in the July, I want to say, July card kit, um, which was pretty fantastic. It was a it was a great card kit. Um, I know it's been a really, really long time since I've put up a video, um, as I'm reminded by some of you who have been checking in on me, and thank you. Thank you very much for checking in on me. I am good. Um, it, has been, it has been crazy busy uh, at work, and I can't even believe when I wake up and it's Thursday already. I'm like, I just went to bed on Sunday, and now it's Thursday, and uh, so time has really, really gotten away from me. And then I, and then I had some issues. Like I've been making cards. I haven't been posting as much as I'd like, um, but uh, I've definitely been, been making cards. Um, but then I had some, I have some issues going on with my computer. So we'll just, we'll just have to see. Um, most of this video pretty self-explanatory. So I'm probably just gonna yap, and thank you guys periodically throughout the video for checking up. It really does mean a lot to me. It's um. It's very encouraging to know that um, it's not just a blog count. It's not a blog count of how many views or how many people have stopped by or anything like that. That there's real people there and they have concerns and when a YouTuber that they like is not posting that they, that they do take the time to reach out and it really, really means a lot to me. And so I want to thank you all for that and for the numerous numerous messages that I have received from you guys and comments on other blog posts and comments on my other YouTube videos and uh, emails and messages and everything like that on the Facebook. Um, I really do appreciate it. For this card I am going to be stamping the Hive background um, on Bristol Smooth Paper with uh, Versamark ink and then I'm going to be embossing that with white embossing powder. So this is the second half because I'm already super yappy. Um, maybe you like that, maybe you don't, but you missed me, so it's all there. Um, I didn't heat in between. I just basically needed to know where my powder was in order for me to line up the stamps for the next one because I knew basically how I wanted this to look. I didn't want a solid background, but I didn't want it to be symmetrical either. And you'll see later on a big mistake that I made and I decided to leave this in the video because we all make them and I feel personally that you learn from mistakes. I learn from my mistakes, I learn from somebody else's mistakes and when I don't see other people making mistakes, it can be very discouraging when I am being the one that makes them. So we'll get to that later on. So I'm just heating this with my heat tool, making sure that everything's good and shiny because I'm going to be doing some ink blending here. Um, so I used Bristol Smooth because I wanted it to blend seamlessly. I could have very well have used the regular 110 pound cardstock. Um, so these brushes here, there was a lot going on about the, the new picket fence brushes and I mean, I'm just a small crafter. I have 465 people on my on my YouTube channel. I have 54 people that follow my blog, you know, like 300 and some on, on my Facebook. I can't afford the picket fence brushes when I have so many other blending options. And as you all know, I'm a huge, huge fan of the dollar store. Most of my adhesives, dollar store. Sequins, dollar store. Unless they come in a kit. This one comes in a kit. Okay came in the kit, the sequins that I used later, and they're super pretty. Um, so when I was in the makeup section of my local dollar store, I saw these brushes that looked just like the picket fence brushes, and I was like, mm, maybe I'll give it a whirl. So what I did was I picked up three. I picked up one for warm colors, one for cool colors, and one for neutrals. And I tried them out, and I didn't have any issues. There was no bristles coming out. Everything was blending nicely. And so what I did was I picked one up for reds, I picked one up for oranges, I picked one up for yellows, and so on and so on. And then I'd still have the one for neutrals. And what I had done to them was glued um, a large enamel dot of the corresponding color that those brush was supposed to be used for right to the back of the brush so I know exactly which one I'm supposed to use. Um, here I decided to use the 
honey color from the Arteza Real Brush watermarkers. I can't remember what they're called. You know what I mean. The Arteza watercolor brush markers um, in there and just super, super messy watercoloring over the top of this thing. So I just kind of scribbled on the color and then added some water and it was super fun. Uh, you got to be a little bit careful because again, this was Bristol paper. It wasn't watercolor paper. So I was like, Ooh, this is getting kind of warpy. <laughs> but as you can tell from my lighting here, which kind of goes wonky later on as well. It is super bright coming through my craft door window. Like I've got those big, huge patio doors over to my left, like four feet away. And the sun was just coming right in. Like you can see how sharp the shadows are. So everything was drying really fast, which was nice because it has been scorching hot here. So once I got the watercolor with the markers the way I wanted them, I did pull out um, my ink tents pencils and I think I'm using carmine orange here and what I'm doing here is I'm just adding a little bit darker in the bottom left of each of the honeycombs um, just so that there's a little bit more depth and dimension um, like that ultimately in the end when I'm done this process you're not even really going to notice that they're there it's very, very subtle. What I really like about using the ink tense pencils is they're not watercolor. You use them like watercolor, um, but they don't react again after they've dried, if that makes sense. So like once I color this all on, I'm going to use water and I'm going to blend out those, those harsh pencil lines. When you add water again, it becomes an ink. So it's permanent transparent like you can still see through it and you can definitely layer it and there's a huge huge learning curve to them um but that's not going anywhere so if you've got some ink tents over top of distress ink which is also on top of the artesas some things are going to lift and some things are not um, so it's really just a matter of playing with them. I haven't used my ink tents a whole lot in previous videos. Um, I've really been trying to use them. They're super, super hyper pigmented. Um, just this tiny little bit and I was constantly like cleaning off my brush. Every time I move it over, I'm cleaning it off, cleaning off because the ink is just saturating those bristles and I don't want some of the combs, especially the ones that are lower down where it's lighter, to get super super dark um, so you can see on here in the ones that I've done um, near the closer to the top where there are darker you can't even really notice that it's there but it was fun to play with them so while that is drying I'm going to set up my card base so I'm just using my regular 110 pound Copic friendly card stock it's the same white card stock I use when I'm Copic coloring for all of my bases all of my building layers super cheap I get it at my local um, stationery store it's just their store brand and you get a ream of 250 for like 20 bucks so I don't feel bad when I have to like when I miscut and I'm like oh crap I have to throw that piece out I don't feel bad at all um, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking that busy heart one and I'm stamping it off once on something else because I want a second generation stamp in the middle because I want this to be very delicate in the background on the inside of the card I know I don't usually do the inside of the card all that much but this one I really wanted to add a little something else. It is something that I need to work on. I see it in a lot of other videos. Um, Amy Rusavi, for example, she from Prairie Paper and Ink, wonderful, wonderful channel. If you don't follow her, please follow her. She's just so sweet. Um, she always tries to do the inside of her cards and I really think it helps her stand out because the inside of her cards are just as fun as the outside of her cards and uh, it, it just adds so much more. It's like a whole another unexpected surprise. I mean, so many of us, we don't even put sentiments on the inside of our cards. I know I don't, not usually. Um, so when there's even something a little bit in there, it makes it a little bit more fun. Um, so I'm stamping the You're the Bee's Knees with the same Wild Honey Distress Ink that I used at the very beginning um, for the panel because I want this all to tie in together. Um, I believe absolutely everything that I used for this card actually came 
from the kit aside from the paper and uh, the the coloring mediums obviously because like those weren't in there but so I'm trying out this glue sponge and uh, this was this was confusing for me I don't know what those depressions are from um, I've never used a glue sponge I had seen that you had to keep it upside down for like an hour and that made sense to me um, so here I had previously die cut two of the honeycomb dies from the die that came in the stamp kit um, just out of the black paper um, and so here I'm, I'm attempting to use this thing because it's a less messy way to glue that is how it's uh, how it's advertised a less messy way to glue um, I don't know if I can support that yet <laughs> maybe when I have some more practice like I don't just putting it onto the sponge didn't get enough glue onto my delicate die cuts. I love the idea of this, but it didn't get enough glue on, on the back of the die cut to put it down. So I had to use like the tweezers and like, kind of like ponce it in, like tap it along the black, but then the glue was coming up around it because I had let it sit upside down for so long, <laughs> only an hour, which is what they said. I tried to follow the instructions and then put it down. So I feel like it was at least equally as messy like I could very well have used a fine tip applicator and um, my Ranger multimedia mat to put glue on this and then not get it all over my fingers and my the top of the die cut and my tweezers <laughs> and I really have to stop using my good tweezers to be picking <laughs> these things up because they're so gross now um, so I use the same black on the front and here we're going to be coming up on my mistake. So when I cut, I get the big pads of Bristol Smooth so I can get like six or eight card panels out of this. So here I am all gung-ho and excited to put this on here and I'm going to stamp on it first. Sorry. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to take the Just Because from the same set and line that up in the Misty and I'm going to emboss that Again. Now, interestingly, normally when I heat emboss after I've already heat embossed something or added a lot of ink to something, I really have to wait, right? Like it takes a long time to dry. But this video, aside from being sped up, there's no breaks in it. There's no pauses in it. I didn't go and do something else. I didn't let the panel dry overnight, which has happened in the past, right? Because it was so hot and sunny in my room. The panel was just dry. So I decided instead of the white, I was going to use black because it's going to pull in the black from the sequence. It's going to pull in the black from the inside of the card and the border that I've got going on here. But I heat embossed it in um, clear um, just so that it would have the same kind of look to it um, going in. And then I've used the um, VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Um, it's kind of a new ink to me. I really like it. I don't like how floppy the lid is. Um, I keep an elastic band on that because I'm like, it's going to dry out. Oh my God. Um, hasn't yet, but maybe that's because of the elastic band. Who even knows, right? So I'm doing this. Anyway, so here we're going to see this mistake that I'm going to make because I'm going to, I'm going to super tape down the back of this. And here I'm going to realize I did not trim down my panel and I'm just going to be like, huh? I've already super taped the back of this. What am I going to do? So the first thing I think of is getting one of the nonstick craft mats. And this is the one from Tonic that comes with the glass mat. And I was like, mm, no, because I'll have to use an X-Acto knife in order to go through that. And I don't really want to cut my mat. That would be bad. I don't really use it. So I guess technically it wouldn't matter to me, but they don't recommend cutting on the mat. And I can see why. Um, so what I decide to do is cut it upside down in my paper trimmer very carefully <laughs> and then I will be able to just adhere it directly to the front of my card the greeting is a little bit off to the side and that's not ideal but that's really the lesson that you have to take away from this isn't it <laughs> pay attention to what you're doing instead of getting all excited over all the mediums that you get to use um, so here I've got my bees. When I got the stamp set, then I had stamped them all out and colored them with the ink tense pencils. And I'm just deciding which little bee I want to use because they are all super, super adorable. Um, so I'm just using some mounting tape here, the foam mounting tape, also from the dollar store. All of the adhesives, aside from the glue sponge that you've seen so far today, um, are from the dollar store because I'm kind of cheap that way. Right? <laughs> 
so I can afford stamps. Um, so yeah, and then I am going to adhere some of the black sequins that also came in the card kit to the front with the Rangers multi matte medium adhesive. So I guess there's two adhesives that I don't use. And I didn't know if I wanted to do just black or if I wanted to do um, black and gold or anything like that. But then I decided I was just going to keep it super, super basic and just have the blacks pull out the golds and have the golds complement the blacks because they do work really, really well together. And that is, that is something that I really like. I like the stark contrast between the black and the the yellows and stuff like that from this. So I'm just deciding where I want to put them. And of course I have to use different tweezers because my reverse tweezers are all gunked up from using the glue sponge, which I've got to, I've got to try a few more times before I really make a decision on it. Um, I haven't, I haven't gotten there and see there's that sneaky little gold. He's like, I want to be part of the group. And I'm like, no, 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 you just, you just can't, you have to go. Um, so I'm just adhering those last ones down and making sure that they don't move anywhere. And that is going to be our card for today. Thank you so much for watching and being patient with me. Um, I will have a link to my blog and my Facebook page down below. Have a great day. Bye.